Hi everyone. The idea for this video came to me while I was at McDonald's using their self-serving kiosk. I saw the barcode on the screen and I thought to myself, would I be able to create a barcode like this using Arduino? But here is the thing, there are so many different barcode standards out there, I needed to figure out the one that would be the best for this kind of project. And more importantly, I had to make sure that I can find support for this barcode standard in the form of a library. I mean, let's be honest, who wants to write the uh, barcode generating procedure from scratch? So if you are curious to see what I discovered and how it all turned out, stick around. So I have a project idea and now I need a library to help me bring it to life. There are many barcode standards, from linear barcodes to two-dimensional ones. I started searching for libraries that support generating barcodes. Eventually I found a library for generating QR codes. Here is the GitHub link to that library. I downloaded the zip file. To use this library, I need to install the zip file in Arduino ID. When I install a new library, I always check for available examples. There is one example in this library. Let's open it and take a look at the code. After having a quick look, I can see that the code outputs the barcode into the serial monitor, which I admit is not what I was expecting. I will still run it to see the result. The output looks kinda like a barcode, but it's not scannable. I think this is because the characters used in the output have different widths than the spaces between them. Let's go through the code, try to understand it, and see if the software actually generates valid barcode data. Before I start looking at the code closely, let's remove parts of the code that we don't need. First we can get rid of the comments at the top, then we can remove the lines of code that generate the timestamp for the barcode and the empty spaces around it. By doing this, the code will become easier to understand and analyze. First, we see the library being declared in the code. Then, in the setup function, the serial monitor is opened to display messages. After that, we have a declaration of the barcode object called QR code, of the specific type called QR code. However, there is no documentation available to explain what that type means. I only can have an educated guess that it will be the table of bits which make the actual barcode. In this example, that table is 29 by 29 bits, which means 84 bits in total, which is roughly 105 bytes. Next, a buffer is defined in the code for generating the barcode. Unfortunately, there is no documentation to explain that either. From my understanding, the larger the data we want to convert into the barcode, the larger the buffer needs to be. To allocate a sufficient buffer, the code utilizes the QR code get buffer size method. And finally, the method QR code init text generates the barcode object based on the hello world text and saves it to Arduino memory providing the pointer that can be used to access it. This section is actually the key part of this code. After that, we encounter a nested for loop that goes through the entire table of bits using X and Y coordinates. It processes one row and then moves to the next, continuing this pattern. The method QRCodeGetModule accesses the Arduino memory and finds the address where the barcode object starts. It uses X and Y coordinates to retrieve the value of the corresponding bit. Depending on whether the bit is a 1 or a 0, different outputs are displayed in the serial monitor. When the bit is 1, it shows a double solid block character from the 8-bit universal transformation format. When the bit is 0, it displays two spaces. After processing each row of the barcode, we send end-of-line character to start processing the next row. Since all the action happens in setup function, we do not need any reoccurring actions in loop. Due to the differences in width, the barcode is not displayed correctly. Let's try to fix it. 
Let's replace the UTF characters with a single hash if one is red and single dot for zero and run the code again. You can see that the formatting looks better now, but obviously in this form QR code is still not scannable. I had the thought to place a comma right after the hash and the dot. By doing this, when I run the code again, I will get the text file with comma separated values that can be imported into Excel. I will need to perform some additional formatting tasks, such as removing unnecessary spaces. When the spaces are gone, we can replace the dots with spaces to make the file more transparent. Let's save the file with these modifications and attempt to open it in Excel. At first glance, it may not seem like much, however, if we adjust the height of rows and width of columns and apply conditional formatting to color cells containing hash symbol black, we'll receive a perfectly formatted QR code. Now comes the ultimate test. I will use my phone to scan it. And there you have it. The message hello world is correctly recognized. Now that we are completely certain the sample code is ok, we can begin writing our own code to show the generated QR code on the OLED display. The display we are going to use is the Adafruit 128 by 64 pixel OLED display. Our goal is to display the QR code in a way that it fills up the entire display and is positioned perfectly in the center. Once the QR code is generated, we can determine its size using the QR code size attribute. This will give us the dimensions of the QR code table, which is in this case 29 by 29. To scale the QR code correctly, we calculate the scaling factor by dividing both the width and the height of the OLED display by the QR code size. We then choose the smaller value between the two to ensure proper scaling. In this particular case, the scaling factor is 2. This means that each value or pixel obtained from the QR code will be represented by a square of 2 pixels by 2 pixels. The entire QR code would be 58 by 58 pixels. After we determine the scaling factor, we can calculate the number of pixels the QR code needs to be shifted to the right in order to be centered on a display. We perform a similar calculation for the vertical shift to determine how many pixels the QR code needs to be shifted downward to be vertically centered. Here's a short reminder how the OLED display should be connected to Arduino. Now that we have that sorted, let's begin writing the code. Firstly, we add three additional libraries declarations that are necessary for using the OLED display. Next, we define the dimensions of the OLED display. After that, we declare the display itself. In the setup function, we initialize the display. To keep things organized, we'll create a dedicated function for generating the QR code. We'll move all the lines related to QR code generation into this function. We will execute this function to generate the QR code for the text Mario's Ideas and see if we can be redirected to my YouTube channel webpage by scanning this code. Here also we do not need any reoccurring actions, so loop function is empty. Now let's create the generate QR code function. Here are the important lines from the previous example. Starting with creating the QR object, allocating the buffer, generating QR code data and displaying that data in the serial monitor. Additionally, I am adding three lines to calculate the scaling factor as well as the horizontal and vertical shift values. Since we no longer need the serial monitor, we can remove those two lines. Instead, we will use the command to draw 2x2 two two pixel square each time we read one from the QR code. The location of each square will be based on a specific coordinates within the QR code data. We will draw these squares using the fillRect method. When the whole QR code is processed, we need to run command to output the result on the screen. The code is all set and ready to go. Now let's test if it works as intended. Great news, it does work, but will my mobile phone be able to recognize this code? Let's find out. Amazing, my phone successfully recognized the code. It redirected me to my channel's main page. I want to do something before I finish. In one of my videos I have built 
the text input device and it is perfect for entering text that we want to convert into QR code. After typing the text, we press OK and the device generates the barcode. To test if it works, we can use a mobile phone to scan the barcode and check if the text is properly identified. And it is. We have successfully achieved the objective of this project. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it useful. Remember to like and share my videos. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel. Special shout out to all my patrons. Your support means a lot to me. Before you go, don't forget to look for a hidden message in the thumbnail of this video. That's all for now. Take care. Ciao.